Hello everyone, welcome to this predictions video on my channel. I am your host and owner of the Matt's channel and I will be predicting the Asian Cup. Let's get right into it, starting with Group A where we have Qatar, Tajikistan, Lebanon and China. For sure this is the group of life. Qatar, I would say, are the strongest team here. They recently ha he got a new Spanish manager after Carlos Quiroz had left, who wasn't doing that well, although he did end fairly strong with wins against Afghanistan, scoring eight goals, of a if I remember correctly, and also a win away at India. And they've got players such as Almo Saliz, Montari, Fief, some players that have proven that they can show up at times. And being at home, though it didn't help open at the World Cup, it gives them an, an advantage here, especially seeing as they have been given a favourable group. L Lebanon, they're another team that have been regressing. In fact, all these teams, except for D Tajikistan, I think, have regressed at least somewhat. Lebanon, since that win at Syria... They've not had had a luck of the green of getting results. And since the World Cup qualifiers, the, the performances haven't been looking good. One player I do know is Omar Bugel, who's former Sutton United player, now playing at AFC Wimbledon. I don't imagine he'll be starting, but he's one player I will be looking out for for the Lebanon games I do watch. China, they've always been a team that's been... Better than the rest, but not on the level of the competitive nations in AFC that would make old cups and far in Asian cups. But again, I th do think this is a favourable group. What's more, they played in Qatar third. Does play into their hands, given that by the time they do play Qatar, they either Qatar would have got six points and the incentive to win for them won't be as strong. Or Qatar might have four points or less, which would, would mean um, they're under pressure, which could also play into China's hands. And Tajikistan, they've been on the rise a bit. Um, they've started maybe showing some potential that they can get to the latter stages of AFC World Cup qualifiers. So this group will definitely give us an idea where they're at. The last two competitive games, they did beat Pakistan, but conceded a goal to them, which wasn't a good look. And they got a draw against Jordan at home. This is, this is a group potentially go either way. Uh, my table overall, I've got Qatar first. Second, I'm going to say it's China. Third, Tajikistan. Fourth, Lebanon. Now let's go to Group B, uh, where we got, we got Australia, who I think have a good chance of winning. Maybe not the best, but they're in my top three for sure. Even though Japan were the best performing AFC team, I do think Australia definitely achieved more with what they did, having expected to be bottom of their World Cup qualifying group, finished second with two wins, in fact. And even gave Argentina a game and narrowly lost. Most of their games will certainly be different because they won't have to be so defensive. They'll be expected to be more on the front foot, especially in this group. They got some some convincing wins in their World Cup qualifying group, albeit they were to Bangladesh and Palestine. And they have some good attackers like uh, Mitchell Duke. Matthew Lecky and Jamie McLaren. Uzbekistan, they were a team that um, were a potential dark horse in this tournament. However, some of their better players have recently been unavailable or doubtful due to injury or possibly retirement. I imagine it's probably the injury one. They're in a group they should potentially be getting out. How far they do in the knockouts, it'll be interesting to see. Syria, they have regressed. They still have their top scorer, Omar, who will need to show up. They play India in their third game, which will be a must win. Um, Syria, only win in World Cup qualifying was away to Lebanon. And Australia and Syria will be playing for the first time since that 2018 World Cup qualifier, where Australia got the better over Syria and had 
advanced to the intercontinental playoffs. And India, I was seeing a lot of high hopes for them, given that they were uh, um, climbing the rank, winning a fair few games. Despite beating Q8 away, they did have a poor performance against Qatar, which didn't look good on, on their end. They were in the last Asian Cup, having, despite finishing bottom, they did win 4-1 against Thailand. I'm expecting a lot of support for India, so they can certainly feel like home games. My table prediction, I'm going to say Australia finish first, Uzbekistan second. I think Syria will beat India, so I've got them third, and India fourth. To Group C, Iran's group, they will be the favourites. Um, they have the best players in the group for sure. Of um, Mary Taremi, Sardar Asmoon. Both are experienced strikers. Taremi hasn't had great form with Porto, although um, his form for Iran has been okay. What on player that um, Iran will be knee eating will be Godos of Brentford. In the last two World Cup qualifiers, Iran have looked better with Godos. When he went off, Uzbekistan came back to 2 2 after Iran were 2 0 up. They should be getting at least six points, though. And they have an experienced goalkeeper in Alariza Benavard, who's performed well in tournaments. Uh, the UAE, uh, they've been on the rise. They can certainly um, get a result against Iran, given that they're not in the strongest of positions right now. They've put themselves in a position to potentially qualify for the next World Cup. I think that they've got a good chance of getting to the quarterfinals here. Palestine, um, things weren't looking great for them. They're in a difficult emotional state with the current Gaza war going on. In the last two qualifiers, in the last two qualifiers, they could have easily beaten Lebanon. So I think they can certainly um, go through as one of the third place teams. Um, Hong Kong are a team I don't know oh, about. They did get it through via the playoffs, if I'm if my memory serves. Correctly, they're not a team I've seen a lot. They have played Iran in a previous World Cup qualifiers. My thinking is Iran will get first, the UAE gets second, Palestine third. I think they'll get a 3 1 win or something like that. If they can get to match day three on a minus three goal difference, then I think that's pretty good for them and Hong Kong to finish above. Up next, we're looking at Group D Japan. They are the favourites for me. Uh, they look the strongest, especially when, when the managers of a couple of teams had left the favourite, some of the, the other favourites that could be here. So I think they'll win, not necessarily, but you'll find out soon. But they're definitely, on paper, the strongest team. I think they should walk this group. I'm going to say they finish first. And then between these other teams, Vietnam, I think um, they was they were a team that was wondering about putting them second, but uh, things haven't looked great for them lately. So Indonesia, they didn't have a good, good World Cup qualifiers lately, um, so that's a bit worrying. But they're a team that can certainly be hopeful of getting that third place spot, especially with Vietnam's form. And Iraq, I think... They're a team that when I see some potential for them to do well, they don't tend to do it. Recently, I would have said Iraq and Vietnam um, get the same points and battle for that second. As far as I hear, and now I'm going to say Iraq gets second, Vietnam f third, and Indonesia fourth. To Group E, again, I would imagine South Korea will walk this group. They've... They've been improving, in fact, under Jurgen Klinsmann after a few months of poor... Son's been very good. Kim min Jae of Bayern Munich is, a, is, of course, one of the best defenders of the continent. Huang Yi Chang has scored in a big mo moment in the last World Cup. We've got a lot of good players. It's, it's down to who gets this second spot. Um, Malaysia, um, well, the standout out thing for them was... They came from 3-1 down at home to Kyrgyzstan to win 4-3. They seem like the weakest team here, although I do think they've got a chance to get into either that second or third spot. Jordan, 
got a good, a good result away to Tajikistan. Not bad. Lost to Saudi Arabia, if I remember correctly. The World Cup fixtures, decent position to potentially take that second place. And then Bahrain, anything could happen with them. I'll say Malaysia get fourth, Bahrain third, and Jordan second. And finally, let's go to Group F. Saudi Arabia haven't started that great with Roberto Mancini. Do you think they were one of the favourites? It's until Herve Renard had left to go and manage the France national women's team. Of course, one very good player they've got is Salam Al Dazari, scored twice in the World Cup, including that excellent goal against Argentina to help them win the game. They've got a good goalkeeper as well. Whilst I don't think Saudi Arabia are in the strongest position, they should be able to win this group. Oman. Before they stood out as like the best team from outside of the top five, but recently their form has been more or less okay-ish. I do think they won't have much problems in this group. Kyrgyzstan, well, they were on the receiving end of being 3-1 up and losing 4-3 to Malaysia. Thailand, I, I've seen some optimism for this nation. They could, they could very well get through. Losing to China at home was a bad sign, and if I'm not mistaken, they might have drawn away to Singapore as well. My thinking of this group is I've got Kyrgyzstan fourth, Thailand third, Oman second, and Saudi Arabia first. My four third place teams, Tajikistan, Syria, Palestine, and I will go with Bahrain as the fourth team. So going to the knockouts, China versus the UAE. China, the away form in the World Cup qualifiers is an encouraging sign, but UAE have been in good form and I think they will progress to the next round. Um, next we look at Japan versus Bahrain. No, no, Japan, I didn't talk about them too much, but they've got a great team with the likes of Kamada, Tomiyasu and Turu Endo. And even some very good players in the supporting cast, like Matone, Oma, Doan, Maida. Great depth, great individuals, great team. And they should be able to beat Bahrain, no problems. So I think they'll go through to the next round. Up next, we go to Australia versus Tajikistan. And go for an Australia win. Good team. Graham Arnold's been getting the best out of since the start of the World Cup. I've got some good attacking players. I think they're one of the teams that can give Japan and South Korea good games. Up next, we're going to go to Saudi Arabia versus Jordan. A Middle Eastern matchup. Two bordering nations. And, they put, and two nations that play each other in the World Cup qualifiers. Big up to Jordan. Big up to Wael al Qadi, the Jordanian Bristol Rovers owner. I think they could maybe give Saudi Arabia a game, but Saudi Arabia have the quality to advance. And then up next, next uh, Iran versus Syria. Um, I'm going to pick Iran to go through. They've got the quality. And Syria ha have not been in good form at all. South Korea versus Iraq. I'm going to go for a South Korea win. There's too much quality there. And Iraq aren't a predictable team. And even and at their best, South Korea should be too strong. And then next we look at Qatar versus Palestine. I think Qatar have got this. Um, they've got the quality. Palestine would just be amazing for them to make it this far or and even get to play the hosts but you'd imagine Qatar will go through. Uzbekistan versus Oman with the fact that Uzbekistan have have uh, don't have their best players of, is potentially available that gives Oman a good chance. I'm gonna pick one I would lean towards Uzbekistan. UAE versus Japan. As well as the UAE have been playing, I am going to give this one to Japan. I think that they'll just be too strong. And then Australia versus Saudi Arabia. Under Roberto Mancini, they have been disappointing a bit, so I that that's a knock on their end. 
when when I f- had this matchup in my head Ed, initially, I was thinking that this can go to penalties and best attacker in Salem Al Dazari. But Australia, with the likes of Harry Suter at the back, a good defensively, they've got some players that can get them goals. I, I am going to give this one to Australia. We've got Iran versus South Korea. Now, this is a tough one to call. Both of which have some good attackers with the likes of with the likes of Mehdi Taremi, Sadar Moon, Son Hai Min. Midfield, you got Gadus versus Huang Hee Chang. Iran don't have any standout defenders. South Korea, however, have Kim Bin Jae at Bayern Munich. Doesn't affect my thinking too, too much. This, this is a tough game. I think we can be more confident about South Korea um, playing well. I imagine they've got more pace to them as well. So I am going to go with South Korea. Although initially I was thinking Iran to get to the final. But I'm picking South Korea. And then Qatar versus Uzbekistan. I think Qatar do have a good chance to get here. And if they do play well in the tournament, I could probably potentially go with them. But I think... The safer bet would be to go to for Uzbekistan. Japan versus Australia. One of the teams that I think could stop Japan. This will definitely be a test for Japan in terms of how can they break Australia down. They do have some good depth of players which they can easily switch out, out if things aren't going well. If it goes to penalties, you could favour Australia really. Japan weren't very good in the penalty shootout against Croatia. In in this very stadium, beat Peru in a penalty shootout. For Japan, it wasn't just Porte aching, which I am I'm sure Moriyasu would have told them to not be doing that or have not so many people doing that for a penalty shootout. But also, Gonda, is he the best penalty shootout goalkeeper? But um, I don't want to read too much into that. I would probably favour Australia if it goes to penalties. That being said, Japan have some very good penalty takers. Could Australia win in normal time? Easily score a headed goal. They could find some laps in the Japanese defence. They could would be playing a high line as well. So... The, I think there's more ways that Japan win, and I think they're the better side regardless, so I'm going to be picking them. South Korea versus Uzbekistan. Uh, well, for Uzbekistan, it would just be great for them to get this far, but I think this one's easier to call. I mean, I'm going for South Korea. And my final, Japan versus South Korea. What a matchup. This two East Asian rivals, some very, very good players. Um, South Korea probably have the best individuals. But best 1-11, to 11, I would say Japan have it. Jürgen Klinsmann has got as far as a semi-final with the the uh, Germany World Cup and, 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 and with um, the USA and Copa America. So um, he'll be looking to go at least one better. This is a tough one. But my thinking is going with Japan because they stand out as the best team for me. I know oh, um, there's the perception that it can be too easy to go over Japan because they've let, uh, let us down in the past, but I don't think Japan ha- have been as good as they have been now. And I think they'll have more chances against South Korea. The depth in attack, it, I would say, is better. I just think they're the strongest team in the tournament, and, and I'm going to be picking them to win the Asian Cup. So there were my predictions overall. What do you think? Let me know as well your predictions. And do also check um, my uh, Asian Cup episode of the Football and Travel Show. But for now, see you in the next video.